And now we're going to look at opening a file that I've made earlier. So here is a file that has eight different widgets that I plan to cut on my CNC machine. Now I've already created the toolpaths for them. So let's switch over to the toolpaths tab. And we're just going to tile our windows so we can see both the 2D and the 3D view at the same time. So I just want to have a look at the visibility of all of my toolpaths. So I'm just going to check this option here. And so here we're able to see the actual paths that our tool is going to take to cut all of these widgets out. And we can see because we've got a set of widgets on the left hand side and we've got a set on the right hand side, we've got this gap in the middle. We can see that our tool is going to be uh, crossing between this space here to go from one side to the other and over here also going from this side over to this side over here. Now that's all well and good, but what if you had clamps to hold your material down and they were positioned centrally at the top here and at the bottom over here and on top of that your rapid Z gaps just isn't enough to clear your clamps. We could potentially have a problem where the tool actually collides into your clamps. And so to avoid that we can look at creating keep out zones and this is where we can assign closed vector boundaries as tool restricted zones. So let's have a look at how we can do that. So we're just going to undraw these toolpaths here. Now we need to create a closed vector in order for us to successfully use the keep out zones feature. So let's switch over to the design tab and we're going to draw some closed vectors that actually represent our clamps. So I figured out that the overall safe zone for my clamp is 10 inches by two inches. So I'm going to go and draw a rectangle. Okay, and I'm just going to draw this in place. I'm just going to draw this out. Okay, so I've got 10 by 2 there, like so. And I'm just going to right click and then I'm just going to let go of that and just drag that down so we're on the edge of our material here. And I'm going to create a copy over on the other side. So Control, Shift, and V, and that's going to create that there for me. Okay, so. These are where I'm going to be positioning my clamps. And so now what we can do is we can assign these as keep out zones. So let's just switch back over to the toolpaths tab. And then we're going to go into this tool here. So this is where we can manage our keep out zones. If we click on that, that's going to open up the manage keep out zones tool. Okay, so as it says, to create a keep out zone, select the desired vector, or you can select multiple vectors, in which case we're going to take these two here. And then what we can do is we can say create from selection. We also have the option to apply a clearance case. Okay, so that's just giving you like an extra border around your clearance vector if you wanted to. In this case, I'm happy to leave that at zero. And I'm going to use this option here to create from selection. And so here you'll see in the 3D view that that's displayed as red. Okay, so it's kind of danger zone. So now what happens is if I go ahead now and just check my toolpaths, you'll see what's happening is it's actually clearing those clamps here. Okay, now if this is the edge of my clamp, if I just zoom in, we might want to think about an actual clearance there. So let's just go back into our manage keep out zones and we're just going to select them like so. And then this time we're just going to put a border around it. So let's just go with half an inch. And you can see as I update that, it's actually updating our toolpath as well. And we can see we're totally clearing those clamps, which is really useful. Okay, so we can close out there and we can see how that looks. So once we're happy with everything, we can go ahead and save out your toolpaths and then everything should save successfully. Now it's worth noting that once you've created your keep out zones, they actually have no relation to the vectors that we use to create them. So for example, if I go ahead and delete them, we should be able to see that our keep out zones will still remain in place. So for example, if I go to use the save toolpath option, we can see that those are displayed there. So with them, with the vectors removed, what happens now if we take, let's say, this set of vectors over here and then we just take it and then we just move it over into position over here. So we know that there is a clump there. Now let's just go ahead and just recalculate all of our toolpaths, okay? So 
The Sapphire is telling us that we, uh, that the toolpath couldn't be created without violating the keep out zones. And we can see all of these warnings here. And so all of these warnings are just telling us that we are violating that keep out zone. And it's just kind of telling you that you are in a clamp and there'd be trouble if you was to output this. But luckily the software actually doesn't let you output this. So for example, if I go now and save out the toolpath, let's just say we take all of those into multiple files and then we go ahead and save that. We can give that a name, so we'll just call that widget and then go ahead and press save and then you'll see that the software will say that one or more toolpaths could not abide by the defined keep out zones check if the keep out zones and their clearance are defined correctly which is going to prompt you then to check where your clear out zones are and again obviously you can see that when you go to save out the toolpath displayed here and obviously within your manage keep out zones form and so if you wanted to clear a keep out zone just simply hit that clear button close out and then when you go ahead and recalculate all your toolpaths you'll see we're not actually displayed a warning because we've got no clear out zones in place so that's how you use the handy keep out zones feature